Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special edition <laughs> of Comics from the Future. So uh, typically on this show, we go over all the comics that are available to order for the week. But because it's a holiday week, Marvel and DC had us order all that the previous week. If you remember our very long show, you have a lot of books on it. So there is literally no comics to order from Marvel or DC. Now, there are a few smaller indie books that are going through Diamond. Um, it's like issue number twos and threes, but I mean, it's so little that instead we decided to do a special show, sort of a year-end review show on 2022. I mean, Andy and I, we've been reading almost all the comics all year, and uh, we did this last year to, to some fanfare. People really liked it, so we thought we would do it again. So we're going to go over just sort of all the biggest comics of the year. Yeah. Some of them are our favorites, but if you don't see one on there that you love, you know, we can't hit them all. This is more like the stuff we think people want to hear the most about yeah. and some of our favorite ones. And so tune to, to, till the end because we'll be talking about what we're looking forward to for next year and kind of some of the big stuff you may have not heard about yet. That is a very good point, yes. At the end, we'll be doing that. Um, also, I'd like to say... Uh, we hit over 2,000 subscribers on YouTube. Yeah, that was our goal. So that was year. our goal. We're going to shoot for 3,000 next year. So thanks to all of you for watching on YouTube. And uh, if you happen to be watching and you haven't hit subscribe yet, go ahead and do it. Your year's not over yet. <laughs> so That could be your gift to us. Okay, so here's us going through, in no particular order, the comics that we thought were sort of the most important ones of the year. I think we're going to hit like... About 30 comics, and then we're going to go through about 210 events, <laughs> and then we're going to go up, we're going to talk about stuff for next year. So let's start with this. Yeah, so starting off, I would say in my top favorite books of the year uh, is World's Finest by Mark Wade, art done by Dan Mora. This, I, you know, when this was kind of teased, like, oh, okay, they're doing a Batman Superman book. They've done a Batman Superman book before. But little did we know at the when this began that this would be kind of a uh, instigating book for a lot of big things coming yeah, in the DC universe. When we learned, oh, like Batman versus Robin is spinning out of this, but it's still continuing. I think Mark Wade has done an excellent job setting up uh, something that feels like almost seventies fun in comics. Very superhero, very uh, bright. But with the modern art of Dan Moore and the modern storytelling and dialogue, uh, I just love this book. And I know a lot of people who watch this, a lot of people at the shop, this is one of their favorite books, too. It's, it's quintessential classic DC feeling. It, it definitely uh, landed, and it was better than anyone expected. Yes. Like, for sure. And... Even on the spec end, there are some spec issues of this, like yeah. the Batman Superman composite cover. Yeah. And then just this week, they had the cover with Superman uh, singing with Paul McCartney. That thing shot through the roof. Yeah. Yeah. So, th I mean, this is, I think, for DC, like a book, I really hope they look at and say, like, oh, this is a good kind of template going forward. We only have to have half Batman. We can have Batman with exactly. another character. Batman's and that still there. Just seems important. Just half. Okay, so the next one, let's let's take it over to Marvel. Now, this didn't start this year. Of course, Moon Knight started in 2021, but uh, still one of my favorite reads of the year. Definitely significant read. I don't think we saw any readership drop uh -huh. all year on this. This, of course, is by Jed McKay. You'll see him on this list several times because he's yeah. one of my favorite writers over at Marvel. I felt like he really had a good year at Marvel. Yeah. Um, and the, the art is uh, Steve McNiven. So just another good run of Moon Knight. All kinds of significant things happen. He kind of got his uh, his his um, house is now like a trap house that he created. Um, a lot of stuff against the vampires. A lot of stuff with um, the other Moon Knight. Um, what's his Hunter's name? Moon. Uh, Hunter's Moon. Yeah, I feel um, like it started. Every, everybody got their butt kicked <laughs> in this series. From Moon Knight to Hunter's Moon to all the villains, everyone gets their chance again. Their butt. Kick so bad in this series. I feel like this one started in 2021, but hit its like stride and like really built up to something grand in 2022. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it started pretty awesome, but yeah. you're right it, to be able to maintain that. Yeah. So I, I'd be remiss to not mention Moon Knight has been a great title and it's going to continue into 2023. Yep. Uh, so next up, Batman. Yep. Another, uh, I mean, to be like, you know what's big this year? Batman. You'd never guess, but... <laughs> I can't believe it. But it, I think 
it hit a, another big stride with Chip Zdarsky coming on board. Right. So, you know, what I'd like to say is I want to take Batman all the way back to where they they kind of restarted it. So you had Tom King do it, and I think people liked that at first, and then later in it was like everyone got a little exhausted. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I, I, you know, so he gets off the story, James Tynion gets on and I feel like he refreshed it because it was so different than yeah, King. Very different. He did Joker War. You know, this is years past leading up to this team. Um, but the art, not everybody liked how manga the art got during the Tynion run. Also, by the end of Joker War, it, it had just gone like maybe an issue or two too long, as good as it was. He was coming up with all those new characters. It was really yeah. fun. But then at the end, it was like, oh, my God, there's so many to, <laughs> to remember. And I'm starting to see how the names were. Uh-huh. Um, so finally, you got Zdarsky on there. And I think I'm waiting for somebody to write Batman for a long time that we could all look back like we did with the Snyder run yeah. and be like, that was some good Batman, yeah. and it lasted. Maybe it's going to be Zadarsky because I think the fail-safe beginning was really good. Um, yeah. He set up, I mean, it's like, who can beat down Batman? How about a robot that Batman made of his own mind, yeah. basically? You know, who will be able to defeat him? And let's also bring the rest of the Bat family and Superman in, get all all of them get yeah. beat down by this creature. I, you know, I've heard a few criticisms that in the end it's like, oh, well, fail safe can win. Well, of course he can't win. Yeah. <laughs> the best you can do as a writer is try to get your readers to believe for even an instant that Batman might lose. Yeah. What what he might lose, like somebody else might lose an eye. Yeah. Or, I don't know. And I, I think it was done really well. I, I'm really enjoying it. So Chip Zdarsky's Batman, real cool. Um, uh, Jorge Jimenez's art, awesome. Yeah, he, he was with Tynan during it, but I feel like uh, this is like refined his work yep. to being like such a very uh, it was very like neon like mm-hmm. uh, cyberpunk during Tynan's, and now it's like quintessential Batman because he even said not till this series he never got to draw Bruce Wayne until this, so all of Tynan's didn't have him drawing Bruce Wayne, and he was excited for this, so it's a little bit more classic Gotham Batman feeling, and I think it's really awesome. Okay, next up is one that you may or may not have read or found in your store, but I know this made uh, this is a big hit uh, for those who could find it and got it. This is Fantastic Four uh, Full Circle by Alex Ross. So this was not even distributed through a like a traditional comic publisher. I think maybe it was eventually, but this was Alex Ross's uh, kind of love letter to the Fantastic Four. Now, it was just a standalone graphic novel, and the story of it is not uh, over. It's not just like, oh my gosh, I've, these are things I've never seen before. This is like, he loves Fantastic Four, and he wanted to show you, these are the things I love about Fantastic Four. So this used Annihilus, this used all that. But it's been a while since we've had Alex Ross do interiors, and he right. really experimented on this. So much so, to he wanted to have his own version of the Fantastic Four. He wanted, every time I draw them, I want them to look like mine not me copying somebody else's design. So he went and created models himself, sculpted them, uh, sewed clothes for them and everything. So every time he looked at those, Ben Grimm's cracks on his face were all in the same spot. So that is the consistency you only get with a master artist. Uh, So if you, this is also just a reminder, if you didn't get a chance to read this, definitely try to find it because uh, it's an Alex Ross like you've never seen. He, he has some new coloring techniques and everything. And overall, I just I couldn't put this one down. So unrelated to this, I guess related <laughs> only in that it's a, another Fantastic Four book. They've relaunched Fa- Fantastic Four, of course. I think we're about three issues in on that with a new creative team. An ongoing series that is supposed to just showcase one character or two characters at a time. It's Each issue is one adventure. They, they're away from all the big, big... Cosmic adventures yeah. and are having smaller adventures. That's been pretty interesting too. It's not Alex Ross, but I just wanted to mention yeah. that because you know it's not much of twenty two twenty two, but it did start. There's gonna be that. some of these that are very like they just started, but already we're very interested in what's gonna be happening with yeah. them. So now let's get to all the different stuff that Donny Cates was doing, <laughs> but has passed on in twenty twenty two to different people. So there's the new Venom series that began. Which of course um, is by Ram V and Al Ewan. They're sharing writing duties, and both of them 
have no trouble putting out a lot of work on their own. So, you know, they did that because they really meant to. They had yeah. an idea, which we've seen because um, Ram V's done most of the Dylan Brock stuff and Al Ewan's done most of the Eddie Brock stuff. The art, of course, is by Brian Hitch. The art has been, you know, really top notch. It's hard to uh, think of this series out comparing it to the Kate series. Right. Good luck writing Venom better than that Kate's run. That Kate's run was just like, you know, yeah, some yeah. of the Venom everyone's going to think of redefining for, forever. Era. This has been very interesting because they've gotten to do a lot more with Dylan. Um, they've taken Eddie to a whole other place. Um, it's very mind warping. And I, we, even as far as we're in, I still don't see the full picture of what they're doing with Eddie. There's like so much going on. Um, so still a very thrilling, great series, real, real good art. Um, so that's what's going on with Venom. But let's get to the, one of the other ones. <laughs> yeah, another one that uh, Bonnie Kate started out this run, uh, and that started at the tail end of last year. I was looking back. It was it was right at the end. So uh, I'm really focusing on, like, the last few bits of this. Um, starting with this cover, there was the big thing, was the introduction of the new character, uh, Titan, right. that is the Hulk Hulk. When the Hulk hulks out, what does he turn into? So um, I am a huge Ryan Otley fan. Uh, he was the artist on Spider-Man with Nick Spencer kind of around last year, year before that. And this was like what I wanted to see him draw. Over the top action, you know, very invincible. Yeah, like I was going to say, yeah, yeah. He's an artist from Invincible. So. so I have really enjoyed this. It is another very different take on the character, putting him in space. This kind of like Bruce Banner piloting him. Uh, in his head um, i appreciate you know i know we'll get back to more traditional hulk series at some point so it's fun to take these detours into uh kind of a weirder other take of the character um and we know that this is uh now going to be written by ryan otley as well as the art for the next couple of issues i think until maybe 14 might be the last issue before a new team takes over. But until then, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I'm excited to see what Otley does when he writes and draws it. And we're going to get some more definitive Titan stuff coming up. Okay, so the next one, uh, staying on the Donny Cates train, is uh, we're going to talk about Thor, uh -huh. but we're also going to talk about the Thor whole crossover, Banner of War. So, um, yeah, I, Banner of War was an interesting thing. That's why I didn't touch on it too much in the Hulk part, because it's like, this is a 50-50 hulk thor uh series where they've uh you know basically been pitted together but by this point thor has um his father odin inside his hammer right and it was a very interesting uh coliseum type fight that uh, i think bonnie case went into it trying to write like what is the ultimate fight between like two of the strongest marvel characters and i thought it was it was a fun kind of light on story but I think it was there to be, let's just show over-the-top action, and I thought it, it really delivered that. But you've been reading more Thor. Right. So we kind of like had to meet in the middle with this one. Right. I forget, do we have a Thor screen, or is it I just think this is just represents Thor. a bit. Yeah. So, um, you know, Thor was, um, Kate was on it with uh, Laura Oka doing the art, but just lately he has left, and a new writer's taken over. Torin Grunbeck has taken over, and the art is now being done by Nick Klein. Mm -hmm. Uh, I really like where that has started because basically uh, Kate set up that whole Black Winter scenario where Thor was shown by Black Winter, this dark future where Thanos has killed all the heroes. He has an Infinity Hammer, a hammer with Infinity Gauntlets in it, including one Infinity Stone we've never seen before, Black Stone, um, which we're still kind of guessing what that is, probably something to do with death. And all the heroes were like zombies working for for Thanos. Yeah. So terrible, terrible thing. We've all been waiting for them to get back to that story, and it seems that Kate's has turned it over to the new team. And that's where they're going, right off yeah. the bat, which is good because it's been long enough. Right? Yeah. Let's let's you know, it's great that you tease us with it, but come on, how many years until so I just wanted to mention that's what's going on in Thor right now. If you um went away from it, you want might want to come back if you want to see you, you know, yeah, that Thanos stuff. And next up is another book that started uh, right at the beginning of the year. Uh, I think it was January when She-Hulk number one started by Rainbow Rowell. And uh, I I really like this series. Um, 
definitely they're trying to kind of mimic uh, a little bit of the show or the show's trying to mimic it where this is not an action packed book. So I know some people were turned off by that uh, wanting, you know, some Hulk stuff, but this feels more like the classic um, she Hulk. That's a little bit comedy, a little bit like slice of life uh, with the superhero sprinkled on top. And I think this has been really fun. Uh, they're just now getting to, of a big threat in the series that was teased early on but we've had all this stuff with jack of hearts that's been super interesting about where he's where has he been how did he come back to life um i i think this is a great book for maybe a lot of readers who aren't super into maybe they're more into like reading indie comics and they're like well i like superheroes but you know i'm not into the big crossovers or big fights and all that i think this is an excellent book for that so, uh, yeah, I just wanted to point out She-Hulk uh, has made a big comeback this year. It's like what you see on the cover. When she hulks out, unlike regular Hulk, she doesn't bust with a shirt. She does it with style. Yeah, she's very stylish. Yep. Okay, so next up we're going to talk about Avengers. So Jason Aaron has been writing Avengers for several years now. <laughs> yeah. And it has all come together where he has brought together these um, teams through throughout history. We have the... Avengers from 1 million BC, the Avengers Forever, the regular team. Um, they're all going up against the multiversal Masters of Evil. I mean, it's all culminating right now. I'm kind of surprised they didn't get the very finale in before the end of the yeah. year. But, you know, with all the delays that have happened. This series, uh, it hasn't felt like it's hitting any delays. But regardless, it's all coming to a head right now. Yeah. So if you've been reading that stuff, you kind of know how many characters he is trying to handle all at yeah. once. So I just wanted to bring up Avengers. A lot happened this year in that. And uh, the art was mainly done by uh, Javier Garin. Uh -huh. Garin was the artist mostly. Uh, and then a book I have loved this year is Ghost Rider by Benjamin Percy. Uh, this has just been like the most fun I think I've ever had reading a Ghost Rider book. Uh, just this, you know, it started off, I didn't, I liked the beginning of it where he was in the town and he was, he kind of lost his memory about he was Ghost Rider and all of that. Turned out that town was like a trap and it was demon possessed and all. But I feel like this book really hit its stride with, uh, where he faced off against like the demon semi truck. And then we had the, I mean, some people thought it was really goofy. I thought it was really cool where they did basically the the Marvel Universe wacky races where all of uh like all the different characters were trying to compete in this race and they all had like motorcycles and different vehicles that were themed around them. So Doctor Doom had a motorcycle that like had his face on it and uh just characters you'd never imagine going on this big race. They brought Wolverine in and he actually became like a key part of that story. And even now, since they've introduced uh, Exhaust, Exhaust yeah. which is a super cool villain that uh, really feels like, oh, you really nailed what a Ghost Rider um, antithesis type character would be. That's uh, if he's fire, he's smoke. They both kind of have the skull motif. Uh, it's just, it's really good. I, I hope people go back and pick up the trades of this if they haven't read it. Because it, it looks dark on the cover and everything. But it does have a pretty good sense of humor in it as well. All right, we couldn't do a year review without talking about Nightwing. Yep. He may be the biggest member of the Bat family outside of Batman currently. Oh, yeah. So uh, Nightwing issue number 99 just released this last week. Um, or no, did we just order it? I think oh, we man. just we ordered just, it. We just, yeah. Issue 100, almost there. Yeah. Like they're almost at issue 100. This, of course, is written by Tom Taylor with art by Bruno Redondo. It has been a great story. I've been uh, happy to review every single one. And it comes out monthly. They've just done a lot with, uh, with Dick Grayson. They've done a lot with his newly found half-sister, mm -hmm. Melinda Zuko, new villain, Heartless. His I mean, dog. His, his dog, right? Yeah. yeah, Haley, otherwise known as Bitewing. Also, Blockbuster, the head of sort of the criminal organization, has been taken out. I mean, just a lot of things have gone on in this series. But I would say, besides that, the art is fantastic. Redondo was, like, made to do this character flipping yeah. around. And just like what you see on this cover, you know, he likes to show all the action through yeah. the timeline in one image. It's, it's such a good book. So, got to mention Nightwing. 
And then another book I've really enjoyed, uh, even though it's been through multiple writers, it started off with Joshua Williamson and now it's Ed Brisson, is Deathstroke, Inc. Uh, this started out being pretty heavily tied in with um, Robin and, you know, their um, Lazarus Island stuff, all of that. Uh, but I thought this had did a great job of uh, exploring Deathstroke and even up until we'll get to it later, but the Shadow War, Shadow War stuff. and then even now uh, we're just wrapping up the Deathstroke Year One story since he's been uh, currently at the center of Dark Crisis. They didn't end the book. They said let's go back and tell his his uh, first year of being like the greatest assassin. So and you know what happened to Deathstroke in Shadow War is what made him be the villain in yeah. Crisis. Like, yeah. it's a complete, you know, if you've read it all like we have, you yeah. can see how... Yeah, it it's actually flows really yeah. well. I say that's one of the best uh, through arcs in over the entire year is, like, Robin and Deathstroke mm -hmm. and the stories that have led one thing to another, which has been kind of helmed by Joshua Williamson. Right, uh, which that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so next up, another Jed McKay book. We spread them out throughout this. It's strange. Of course, this is a book where Clea has to take over because Doctor Strange is, is dead. You know, we had the, the quick little death of Doctor Strange arc before it. And uh, Clea is not nearly as kind of a Sorcerer Supreme. <laughs> she is a, she's very powerful. A, lo a lot of cool things happen in this book. Her trying to figure out who this new Harvestman is, trying to bring Strange back to life, the Blasphemy Cartel. Just you know, another great read, just from beginning to end. And uh, the artist on this was Marcelo Ferreira. It's still going, by the way. Oh, I yeah. kind of said it, it sounded like I was saying it was over. Okay, this is one of the biggest books of the year, right? and one of the biggest surprise books of the year. So, Eight Billion Genies, written by Charles Soule and art by Ryan Brown. Uh, your team back from Curse Words, but this I think his and hit. God hates astronauts. Right? God hates astronauts. Uh, this is hit harder, though, than I think Curse Words did. Yeah, Curse Words yeah. came out of the gate pretty big. I think the concept was a little abstract for some people. But this just uh, is, and I could go on about this book, how well written it is. Uh, everyone in the world gets a genie at the same time, and they get one wish. And what happens with that? Every time I think... Well, there's a plot hole. What if you did this? What if you wish for this? They address it. I don't know if there's any workaround that hasn't been brought up or somehow someone's done it and then been reversed by someone else. It's just fantastic. Uh, it doesn't take any time at all for it to be announced. That it was optioned for multiple projects at Amazon. Uh, this is just, I think, will make a lot of people's best of the year lists. I'm sure this is going to win a ton of awards just because of how well done um, it is. And we're still waiting, I believe, on the last issue or the last two issues. I don't yep. remember. But okay. it's great. So next up is Detective Comics. This also got a new creative team. Ram V is writing this, and um, the artist is Ivan Rice is doing the art. They've taken it and made it way more gothic, uh, like sort of gothic operatic yeah. in art style and they've introduced like you know they've brought sort of back uh barbados is kind of tormenting batman there's another uh historical family who comes back who claims that they they own arkham and now they're trying to do a whole two-face plot which is really good like a lot more focus on two-face than i thought but really it's more like the the feel of the book the atmosphere yeah. that has changed more than anything so yeah, and it, this year we also had Arkham Tower, and we had, I mean, Detective has been through a lot this year. It was weekly for a while. It's, uh, Detective has, has been pretty big this year. Yeah, Arkham Tower was, was really cool. That's, that's true. Okay, I mean, how could you not talk about the long-awaited return of return. Saga? Um, how many years And then it went it? away again. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Was it Three years or more? I think that sounds right. Um, since three years. the previous issue of Saga, and who knew it could come back with such a bang? I was a little cynical going into it because I was like, it's been gone so long, but it's not going to be as. Yeah. Um, will, will people still care? As well? People still care. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure the, the writing and the arts, everything, but have we moved past 
saga was it so long nope it came back yep. and people who hadn't basically read comics since saga yep. ended were like hey i heard saga's <laughs> back um uh, it is still fantastic it's on a little bit of break now i think till january uh yeah it's all planned though you know they yeah yeah between arcs and it's not like uh oh, what where is the next issue? It's like no, if you if you read in the letters pages or you go online, right. you can find out that they they do story arcs and take little breaks so Fiona Staples can catch up or the writing can catch up. Uh, it's but it's still fantastic. Uh, Saga is is here to stay for a while. So here's a book that Andy and I both enjoy, and we like it. One reason is it doesn't have a lot to do with all like yeah. big events at DC. It's very insular to its own characters which is Flash. So, of course, it's been following Wally West this entire year and his family, and it's just a fun read. One thing after another, from, you know, him going to Wrestling League to him going to Gem World. Uh There's just so many cool plots that have taken place in this. This is by uh, writer Jeremy Adams with art by, um, oh, what's his name? Um, Fernando Pissarin uh-huh. is the artist on this. But this is one of those books that everybody reads and we like it and we're like, wow, it's weird. We got a lot of people reading this, but it's not like linked in with all yeah, the bad you events. Don't, and... You don't see a lot of people talking about it in the sense of like, oh, this this crossover they're doing or this yeah. big event they're doing. It's like, for the most part, Flash is one and done or two and done yeah. stories, but they're all fantastic and they have great sense of humor. The issue where like, they break the fourth wall and it's like Dr. Fate talks to the yeah. reader and he's like, we need your help and stuff. You never knew what you were going to get when you picked up an issue of Flash. And, and that's awesome. It definitely doesn't rely on first appearances no. and things like that. It's it's just, you know. Solid. A solid comic, yeah. Okay. Uh, another breakout hit. And I want to say I had some help in this because uh, I hand sold this to a lot of people. Um, I feel like even the covers are the covers are great, but don't tell you what this book is. Uh, so this is Exterminators. It's a mini series uh, written by Lee Williams, and art is by uh, one of my favorite artists right now is Carlos Gomez. And I was not expecting to open this book and immediately have like a big parental warning about how adult this book was going to be. Now it's still within the bounds of Marvel, like you know they're they're not pushing it over the edge. But uh, that just kind of warns you that there's going to be a lot of uh, bleach swearing and uh, over-the-top action and just situations and conversations uh, with these characters. It's Boom Boom, it's Dazzler, it's Jubilee, it's Wolverine, and it has just been fantastic. It's not another one that's not super tied in with uh, like the Krakoa stuff. They'll mention it, but this is X-Men going on an adventure that involves vampires, and uh, just recently The Collector showed up. It's just so much fun, and uh, definitely in my top favorite Marvel books this year. Here's a hit series from DC I have a question about. So it's the Poison Ivy series, and you know it's weird I have a question because I've read it, <laughs> but I have a, just sort of a question for all of us, and I don't know if it can be answered. And that is, the Poison Ivy series has been really popular, but has it been more popular because how, you know, good the content is, or has it been the covers? Yeah. It has had some fantastic covers that I suspect have really driven up um, people buying it, which I think is totally legitimate. I yeah. Mean, comics are art. Buying a comic for a cover, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's the whole package. So I, I kind of wonder how much that has helped this series Um because I'm shocked how many of them are gone every single week from yeah. our store. But, you know, then I see the covers set up for the, the next order, and it's like, oh, more good covers. Yeah. This book is crazy. I mean, Poison Ivy, she's trying to destroy the world. She's on a road trip to do it. She is not really at all a hero in it at all. Um, it's it's great. And the interior art's really good, too. The interior artist is Tegan Ilhan. This is written by G. Willow Wilson. Yeah, it's also interesting, too, the the story of her being bad, uh, you know, trying to destroy things. And it was originally supposed to be, like, six or seven issues, and they've expanded. Yeah, and it's like so popular of expanded. I, I, I guess G. Willow Wilson gets to stretch that story out, because it would have been weird to end at, like, seven. And it's and, like and she, she just... She's already changed her mission, which is good. It, yeah. To me, it doesn't feel like she stretched the story out. It was more, oh, okay, well, that one's done. I got more. Yeah, yeah, so. that's great, and... Uh, another big one just recently came out, 
be talking about one of two here. Uh, it was a big deal when we learned that Dynamite was going to be publishing Gargoyles and then uh, Darkwing Duck, two Disney properties. Uh, Disney owns Marvel, so everyone would have assumed these properties would have been published through Marvel, but I'm guessing they're so big, they can spread the love to other publishers as well, like Star Wars with Dark Horse and all of that. But uh, I... I feel like Gargoyles was the thing, like, I loved growing up, and I knew people liked it, but I didn't know then when this came out that how big of a hit, yeah. how many people would be ordering this, how many covers it would have, people clamoring for those, uh, variants and incentives. Uh, I think, I hope that they saw the success of this, and it means a big future for the Gargoyles franchise, because it was always a favorite growing up. It was mature. Uh, very much in the style of Batman the Animated Series, all of that. So I, I'm excited. We've only got the first issue out. Yep. So we haven't even. I, two should be out very soon. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's just it's a it's a great first issue. I'm excited to see where the story goes. Uh, this is written by Greg Wiseman, the original creator I, I think of Gargoyles. A lot too. Yeah, that was like everything you read of him. He's like, yeah, this is a story I've been thinking about for years it's an official like next part of their story so that's big too and the other thing like i mentioned is uh, darkwing duck has not come out yet no. but another one that's uh, they're really uh, uh hitting some of us at a certain age being like yeah you remember this uh you want more stories in this so i'm excited about this this is going to be written by amanda dybert and the art is by Carlo Sidloro. It was actually supposed to come out. It got pushed it's a little bit. Delayed. Yeah. I, I even wonder if it was supposed to come out at the end of this year, but they pushed it. I think it's still January. So we already put orders in, but I've read they're actually going to open orders again one more time okay. in a few weeks once we're doing orders again. Yeah. So, so it, it's got pushed back at least a month. Yeah. So uh, you still have a chance yep. if you you know you didn't tell your store. Uh, but I think this one is going to be another really popular uh, issue to come out. And I'm excited to see what other old Disney properties they, they break out to. Uh, maybe we'll get a new Rescue Rangers or something. Okay, it's been another big year for TMNT. So I did, um, last Ronin, did that end at the beginning of this year? Because it stretched out so. so far. I believe it did end. But now they're already into their next big event, the Armageddon game which is written by Tom Waltz, who is a longtime yeah. Turtle writer, and he is a good writer. He has just great writing chops for somebody where I think we'd be satisfied enough just to see the Turtles doing cool stuff. He goes way beyond that. Um, so the Armageddon game has begun, and uh, I think the main artist who does a lot of that is Vincenzo Federici. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a book, too. It's like, when people notice, it's like... You know, you you started reading. It's like, oh, you hadn't read everything. You started, you're like, this is like one of the best books coming out. Yeah. This is some of the like best writing. I got away from Turtles for a while. And yeah, when I started reading again. I was like, wow, <laughs> man, this 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 is nice. They are not phoning the thing at all. all. So if you're a deep fan, I'm sure you know. Uh, and then another big one to come out this year is Star Wars Mandalorian. This number one was huge. Um, this is, of course, retelling or uh, uh, in comic form. The entire first season of The Mandalorian, issue by issue. Uh, we've still got three issues left of this, two or three. Um, and I am pretty sure they're going to do a season two. We'll see if they do Book of Boba Fett or any of the other things. But uh, I think this is a lot of fun. Uh, this is um, written by Barnes and uh, the art is by Genty. Uh, just, just really cool. I like that they did this. And it's kind of a, a synergy thing between uh, Disney Plus and the movies and the comics that they can release this so close to each other. It's nice that sometimes the TV shows can get back to the comics. Usually, and you comic people know this as well as I do, the comic comes out, we love it for years, and then finally it comes <laughs> to TV, and then all of our family who won't talk to us about comics, now they love it too. Yeah, now they're asking you questions yeah. about it. So everything. this time, it, it did it the other way. Okay, so here's a few indie comics we got to mention. So Berserker, of course, this started back in 2021. That's where everybody ordered it all over the place. It is almost over. Issue 11 just dropped. It has one issue left to go. Um, still pretty noteworthy independent book that we still have a lot of people reading. 
um, because it's by Matt Kent, but I think more importantly, Keanu Reeves co-writes it. Yeah. It has been announced even further this year that they are going forward with a, a movie, with an animated series. You know, every time it comes up, you think, oh, well, maybe they're not going to do it all. But Keanu's there like, nope, we're, <laughs> we're doing it all. Um, and, of course, Ron Garney does the art. A few other indies I want to mention that didn't start this year but still were some of the biggest books. Something is Killing the Children. Yeah. Every bit as big as it has been for some time. This, of course, is by James Tynion with uh, art by Deladera. Uh, it has creepy covers like this. Uh, in fact, something like th this this creature did something pretty significant in the last issue. Mm -hmm. If you saw the last few panels, I reviewed that on our Monday show. Um, so something killing the children, still just trucking along, big as ever. And then, of course, the, uh, the sister series, House of Slaughter. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is right now on a bit of a hiatus, but it, it is coming back. Okay, and another, I mean, it's one of my top favorite books. Every time it comes out, it has been for years, but uh, it's just amazing. It's still... No uh, matter the volume. No matter the but, volume. Uh, it's crazy that um, a character like Darth Vader that's such a, you know, a stone, you know, no face, no expression, no anything, uh, can have such a compelling series uh, week after week, month after month, year after year, and this year brought us the story coming back to the stuff with uh, uh, Padme's handmaidens, yeah. Sabe coming into it, and now working with Vader, uh, kind of reluctantly, but we know that might be uh, she might be into it more than uh, she was before. We got all this stuff where uh, Vader actually met his former friends from his uh, days on Tatooine. Uh, that was really cool. This whole story arc in the desert, it just continues to be great. And uh, I think with the Hidden Empire stuff, it's been really cool to to see what he's been doing. You know, Vader, he's a powerful character. He's really intense. He has a very dark backstory, but also he's really intelligent. Yeah. And, and so you can have a lot of smart people surround him, but he's gonna, yeah. you know, win out somehow or another. Okay, so next up is Mary Jane and Black Cat. So Black Cat series by Ted McKay ended in 2021, but uh, you know she couldn't stay out of the limelight too long. So they just started this. This is brand new, just dropped. So I know where this is kind of the tail end of 2022, yeah. but still got to got to get Black Cat in there. Um, you know, excellent first issue of them teaming up, um, going into limbo and. I'm waiting to see what happens with second issue. Yeah, so. and I'm guessing that he's not done with either of these characters going after this series. I think he's got more stories to I tell I mean, he, he did the best Black Cat stuff almost ever yeah. back in this 2021 series. I, I think Marvel's going to let him continue yeah. on with that character. And then we have another really big breakout series this year, written by Cullen Bunn and art by uh, Freddie Williams the second is Godzilla Power or Godzilla versus Power Rangers. Uh this was like shocking when uh issue 1 came out. I thought it was a cool concept uh seeing these, but we had so many people coming in to pick this up. It was uh I think bigger than either of the the series by themselves. People wanted to see this match up. So I it's I think about to come out in like a collected edition pretty soon. So if you didn't read this one, uh, it's got more than just Godzilla and just the main Power Rangers. It explores the whole universe of both of them. Really, really fun book. So here's another indie series that is ended because it was just, you know, a five-issue series, but is now collected. You can read this whole thing. It is Twig by uh, writer-artist Scotty Young with interior art by Kyle Strom. Uh, it's just an adorable, imaginative story. I mean, if you like Jim Henson-type stuff, um, I, I could compare this to so many awesome things that I like. I, I think this story is just incredible. In fact, they even have announced they're doing a second one. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that's you know Scotty Young. We don't have it pictured here, but is doing I Hate Fairyland again. Yeah. Just doesn't stop. He like cranks out up. hits. I meant to bring up. Yeah, I Hate Fairyland is back, and that's another fairly noteworthy one. We don't have screens for everything yeah. though, so. Okay, one that has just only had, I think, two issues, um, but I've been very surprised by how much I like this. This is Secret Invasion. Um, I didn't know going into this because, 
you know, you had the previous big event they had years ago, Secret Invasion. I was like, a little bit thought, you know, this is maybe a tie-in just to get you more familiar with that name before the TV show comes out. And it still may be that, but Ryan North has crafted a story that I'm now very invested in. Uh, when he said, you know, you won't know who's who and all of that, uh, that is super true with this one. Uh, you know, at the end of the first issue, we were like, oh, someone in the Avengers is a scroll. Issue two, we, f we go, oh, that's who it was. And then found out, oh, that's not the end of it. There's something else going on that maybe even one of the Avengers is working with a scroll. It's just setting up a super intriguing mystery that I can't wait to see where it goes. Maybe one of them who's rude enough to fly in front of the in front of the title itself. Yeah, probably someone with that that attitude. That attitude, yes. Okay, so uh, Black Panther, also noteworthy book this year by writer uh, John Ridley with art by Jermaine Peralta. In issue number three, you had the first appearance of a new character named Tozen, and it just made everybody go crazy. <laughs> Everybody was looking for that issue, buying that issue. I think somebody at Marvel said something like, he's going to be the new Miles Morales. And when you say something like that... Them are fighting words. Yeah, yeah. And then we waited and waited for Tozen to be back in the book. And it looks like he's finally maybe going to be a regular in it starting this issue that just dropped. Um, I, I it almost took it a on, whole year. I reviewed it on Monday. But that aside, all the Tozen stuff aside, it's been a really good series. Uh -huh. um, T'Challa... A real political series, a real sort of, um, you have to view T'Challa's ideas of morality and what do you do to protect your country and countrymen mm -hmm. and when do you go too far. And um, I mean, he loses his kingship. He gets uh, exiled in yeah. this book. So I, it's legitimately really, really good. Uh, even all the toes and stuff aside, which I think is cool. Yeah. Just, you know, I think a lot of people jumped in for that and it's like, but you might be missing yeah. forest for the trees sort of thing. I'd like to mention there was one book that I forgot to put on <laughs> here. I thought of it later and that is Grimm. Grimm has been awesome. It's by Stephanie Phillips with awesome art. I've talked so much about on all our shows by Flaviano um, about a Grim Reaper who is able to come back to the world of living. She doesn't know why. And anyhow, I, I forgot to mention that book was a big, awesome indie book. Because now we're going to get to the biggest events of 2022, starting with. Yeah, there were a lot of events. So we're just kind of focusing on some. What are some ones I remembered, uh, <laughs> which tends to be towards the latter side of the year? But uh, starting off with Dark Crisis that just ended. Um, I thought this was a really fun event that uh, really showcased all the characters, especially in the main title, um, that don't always get the spotlight. You got, I feel like Jonathan Kent had one of his most powerful, most Superman moments when he flew in uh, to save Nightwing against Cyborg Superman. Uh, just a really fun series that was kind of an we we followed all the way up to it with Just League Incarnate and Infinite Frontier, all of that. This was the big capstone to that and setting up the stuff to come next year. So, yeah, it was definitely one of the big ones. They also surprised us by adding On Infinite Earth at the end of yeah. the title after the first issue. I was surprised you picked this one. This I know. Screen, and not, because, yeah, that was, that was in, and all of us getting to discuss was that planned? Why did they add it later? Yeah. And that was that was interesting. Plus, they're they're kicking off with the death of the Justice League that I don't think anyone truly believed. But uh, I sometimes I had to tell people like they're like, "Do you really think the Justice League is dead?" It's like, no. <laughs> just as much as I think Superman doesn't die, it's just this is what they do. So a DC event way before this, early in the year, was Shadow War. Uh, Shadow War was good because um, basically somebody had killed Ra's al Ghul. And they made it look like Deathstroke did it. I mean, it was like Deathstroke standing there like, hi, I did it. So you know Deathstroke didn't do yeah. it. Yeah. But who did it? Even Deathstroke kind of sees it on TV and he's like, I haven't worn that suit in years. That is exactly I love what that. I love yeah. that part. Yeah, so it becomes a big fight between uh, Deathstroke and um, Ra's al Ghul or Ty al Ghul and her family. Robin gets drug into it. Batman gets drug into it. It was a great event. And like I said, it really changed Deathstroke in the end in a way – that was not so good and yeah. made him from anti-hero to straight up villain. So, And then we have Batman versus Robin that just ended 
uh, this last week. Um, I love this one. This kind of spun out of World's Finest, uh, but deals with a lot of the kind of tensions that's been building with Robin and Batman, where uh, Robin went back to Talia to learn from her and dealt a lot with even still the death of Alfred as Alfred mysteriously reappeared in the series. Uh, what does that do to Batman? Uh, and stuff, All the stuff with uh, the Demon Neza was super cool. Um, and that leading into what is we'll be talking about in a little bit coming in the future with Lazarus Planet. Uh, it's kind of a seamless transition between all of these that I think people have really enjoyed and have had really, really nice character moments uh, between Damien and Batman and uh, the whole family that was involved in the story. So this is more of like a mini series than like a full on event because it was just with Spider-Man 2099's future. But there was the whole Spider-Man 2099 thing. Which was the it um, introduced more twenty ninety nine characters, Black Widow twenty ninety nine, Winter Soldier twenty ninety nine, a few others. You got a new X Men twenty ninety nine team, and they all had to join together with Spider Man twenty ninety nine to go up against Norman Osborn. I think we were surprised by this because the first issue was Spider Man twenty ninety nine Exodus Alpha Alpha. The whole thing is called 2099 Exodus. That's the right. whole event. And we were like, okay. And then the next issue, you're like, oh, he wasn't in that much. And the next issue, you're like, I don't think yeah. this is actually about him. I think this is about the whole... Introducing, yeah, the yeah. new characters that he will end up uh, teaming up with. So it had a lot of first appearances. It let writers and artists just do different things in that timeline. So I wanted to mention that. Then we had Flashpoint Beyond, uh, Jeff John's return to the Flashpoint universe using one of his, uh, not created characters, but uh, Thomas Wayne Batman, who's been in and out of the DC universe for a little while, returning him back to his universe, him figuring out why it's still around when it was destroyed at the end of Flashpoint, and uh, continuing to follow the threads uh, of Jeff Johns' long storyline he's been having about um, the Watchmen characters, we got some new characters introduced at the end of this. That's right. Uh, just very interesting. Uh, not what I thought going into it, but upon leaving the series at the end of it, in hindsight, I see what the plan of it was. And this is also another piece in bringing back the Justice Society and really looking at what, what does uh, the legacy of DC mean? What do these characters mean? All of that. So that was I, I'd like one. to add, because as much as they're bringing back the Justice Society, I also see it. The flip side is they're bringing Jeff Johns back in the comics. Yeah. Because, you know, he stepped away for a little while to work on like the movies and TV yeah. show end of things. And um, this year is kind of him getting his foot back in the yeah. door. And this was sort of like, OK, here's what I'm setting up. Wait to see what I do with all the justice. Yeah, because this was the, the beginning of that. We've got, you know, he's now writing the Stargirl yep. miniseries. Uh, Justice Society is uh, just started with had issue number one, and we know he has a lot of plans for next year. I'm just glad to see him back on the top yeah. of the hand. So. Okay, so the next one for Marvel, of course, there was Axe. That is Avengers versus X-Men versus Eternals. Yeah, this was, uh, at, I would say, probably Marvel's, like, what they would consider their biggest event of the year. I think so, too. Um you know, this was... Uh, it came off of a free comic book day thing. That's yeah, how, that's, that's, that's how tell. you know what they, uh, they put their power behind. You had uh, Dark Web in this. Yeah. Uh, so, this, of course, was uh, a thing I I wanted to see happen. Where finally, they all kind of look at the X-Men and said, like, I think you've gone too far. <laughs> uh, a thing that I've been wanting to see for a long yeah, time. Yeah, you have powers over life and death now and and the eternals basically are like that seems like a deviation we're gonna stop you uh it started kind of with that but then we got the uh tony stark brought back their celestial that was the avengers headquarters and it suddenly was starting to judge Ju people. judging everybody uh it was a very interesting story that was not what i expected um i think we're still waiting to see the full fallout of that we don't really know where we've left the Eternals. We've seen a little bit of it, but uh, I think it's brought a lot of the what the X-Men have been doing to light. And 
that will be leading to something coming next year. Yeah, Kieran Gillen was given a lot of rain on, on that yeah. whole thing. Okay, so next up was Trial of the Amazons, which I read all of, and I was joking throughout the whole thing because, like, the trial just never really <laughs> happened. It just got disrupted yeah. altogether. Um, but, you know, they might have been talking about other trials right. other than that. I, I don't know, actually. <laughs> uh, but this helped uh, us learn about the three different tribes. Um, this was done by Becky Cloonan with a bunch of other writers, too. And Joelle Jones, of course, had a large part in this, a lot of good art in it. So um, many things happened in this, especially Nubia becoming Queen of the Amazons. Yeah. I think this series had a lot of things that it had to get done, setting up the three tribe, kind of saying, like, here's all of their viewpoints and uh, bringing Nubia in and, like, kind of repositioning Wonder Woman. Yeah, um, Yara Floor with her tribe, the Escasitas. Now we know all about them. And then there's the Banna Magdals. You know, you don't you don't see any except for the Themyscarians, yeah. typically, so... And then we had uh, actually a couple of Star Wars uh, events this year. Uh, we had Crimson Rain, and we have just started, or, or a little bit into Hidden Empire, but it's Charles Soule's three-act uh, magnum opus, starting with War of the Bounty Hunters, Crimson Rain, and then Hidden Empire following Kira, you know, from the... Uh, Han Solo's first love, who has now become the head of a criminal empire, and her goal is not just to bring down the empire, but specifically take down the Sith ruling it, which is Vader and Palpatine. And this has been, you can tell, something that Charles Soule has been planning for a long, long time. And this final act of it, uh, I'm really interested to see what is going to come out of it. Uh, because we don't even really know if Kira survives this. You know, he even said, or someone says at the beginning of the series, like, this is how she fell. We don't know if that's, like, death or how she loses, loses yeah. her power or whatever. Right. But this was another big one that's still going on uh, now on Hidden Empire. Okay, you mentioned uh, Devil's Reign a little bit earlier. Yep, Devil's Reign, another... This is, this is an interesting one because... Uh, I am not fully caught up with Daredevil. I've actually gone back to read or to read uh, Zdarsky's run from the beginning because this is a natural uh, continuation of that. So I read Devil's Reign. It's actually pretty accessible, even if you haven't read all of that. But it will make you want to go and read all of it if you haven't. Uh, of course, this follows uh, Kingpin as he's finally going to reveal. A, a, like a, a book of secrets he has on all of these Avengers and X-Men and Fantastic Four uh, and Daredevil trying to stop him. There was a lot of uh, action and a lot of shakeups in the uh, criminal organizations in New York. And then that spun out into the new Daredevil number one, but which is also still a continuation of the previous one. We got a lot with Elektra now being Daredevil, yeah. how they kind of, it's not like uh, the hero and sidekick. They basically have like a dual role yep. as Daredevil. It was really cool. So I, I thought this was excellent. And Daredevil since then has still been one of the best titles that Marvel's putting out. And here's an event that is still going on that started late in the year. Dark Web. Yeah, Dark Web is uh, it's been really interesting. You know, it's basically Chasm and uh, Goblin Queen. Goblin Queen. Uh, being real mad that they're clones and that no one uh, gives them the time of day, and so now that they are, uh, are, we've we've kind of went through Act One of this where you see them uh, turning a bunch of things in New York into monsters and all of that, and we know a lot of the characters will end up in limbo, and we haven't got to that part of the story yet, but uh, this has also been uh, pretty fun so far, and I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what happens with it. Okay, so now we're going to go over just a few miniseries that were pretty big. A lot of these are continuations of previous miniseries. Yeah, yeah. Like DC <laughs> versus Vampires Killers. Yeah, uh, just once to mention, you know about these. Uh, this one was, of course, a one-shot. They did the Killers and Hunters uh, one-shots that tied in. But uh, DC has really set itself up well with these multiverses that they've now made, you know, canon in their their multiverse 
uh, with DC versus Vampires. Deceased also. Yeah, Deceased, which we don't have listed here, but it's about to hit its final chapter. Um, then we also have Dark Knights of Steel, yep. which has a few more issues left, which has been a big hit uh, by Tom Taylor. And we also have, uh, by Daniel Warren Johnson, and I believe Juan Gideon doing the art, is Jurassic League. Uh, where all the Justice League and heroes are dinosaurs. Super cool. And now since the uh, this last um, Dark Crisis Big Bang issue, they've integrated all of these into the multiverse uh, proper of the DC Universe. And I, I think uh, DC Mech was also this DC year. DC Mech was this year, yeah. They had quite a few of these little ones. What ifs yeah. uh, with the DC Universe. Okay, so next we're going to talk about some key moments in comics from 2022. And, of course, we got to start it with Batman Spawn. Yes. Back together first time in 30 years. Yeah, I mean, this was uh, this was possibly like the most talked about, like, anticipated book. This was like the last Ronin of this year, yeah, yeah. but it was just a one shot. That's why I'm like, oh, I really wish they had decided to make it at least three issues because I would have liked to have, you know, rode this wave longer than yeah. just one shot. Uh, art by Greg Capullo, written by Todd McFarlane. Uh, really interesting. Definitely a merging of the two worlds. I don't, it doesn't really completely take place in one or the other. Maybe a little bit more in the Spawn universe. Uh, with all the dead zones and everything, but I think I think the thing most people have taken out of this is like Greg Capullo was one of the first artists on Spawn. He did his huge run on uh, Batman with Scott Snyder, Lord of Owls. and when you read this, you go, "Oh yeah, he's he's the best at at this." You know, he's uh, he's a legend. Well, here now. I'll also say McFarlane over the last bunch of years, he has just been a master of just keeping Spawn right on the mouth of everybody talking about comics. Like, yeah, I, I don't know if anyone, any single like person, you know, people have always talked about Batman and Superman, but for an indie character to still be, you know, what so well known, so well known, and is still expanding yeah. is remarkable. Okay, so next up we have the return of the Fables comic. Yeah, this is this is a personal thing for me. I love Fables. It's one of my like two favorite series of all time, and I think this just goes to show of like, uh, you know, creators are never completely done with something. Will Willingham and Mark Buckingham coming back to this uh, is is just a reminder that you know. Even if the comic says it's over, it may be not be over, and that you know these these stories are forever. Basically, and Neil Gaiman does the same thing with Sandman. Yeah, you it's, know? The same it's like thing give, with give him five, ten years, he'll come out with another few issues, and they're they're good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so next up is um, what is it? The reintroduction of the Infinite Earths in DC. Yeah, this was just a, a big thing that just happened in uh, the uh, Dark Crisis. And it's a little bit hint to what's coming next year. These are, you know, talking about big moments. And I think this is just a hint at DC's new um, uh, uh, forward-looking ideas of everything matters. We're not going to confine ourselves to uh, any one look or one feel or whatever. You can see that with books like Jurassic League, that they're willing to take chances now and now it's a world yeah now it's a world that we can revisit mm -hmm. so that was really big this year and i think when we talk about what's coming up next year this is a key point of that and then our last part of this segment we got to bring up high republic yeah high republic started phase, phase two. two um i'm i'm i feel this personally because uh of course i read every star wars thing i read all the books and whenever something new comes out like this, you know, these are not characters other than Yoda, who's really been in it that much. Um, will people accept it? You know, it's a hard it's a hard sell. It's like, right. here's a new Star Wars thing with a bunch of people you don't know, uh, planets you don't know, all of that. And we have some of the highest numbers. You know, this and Vader and Star Wars are all kind of equal in how many we have uh, ordered. So I think this is great. I'm excited because I got to draw 
a story in the High Republic for Dark Horse this year. So just a little piece of me is like ingrained in the High Republic now that is really cool. So I am excited to see what is going to be coming with this. I think we're going to be starting phase three mid to late 2023. That sounds about right. um, and this is all leading to, uh, I don't know, it's a leading to, but it's a precursor for Alkalite. Uh, the new Star Wars live-action TV show that's going to actually be set during the High Republic. We've seen a few leaked screenshots of that uh, that are very exciting. We see some of those, like, traditional Jedi robes that are a little bit more uh, ornamental and everything. So, uh, if you're not reading High Republic, this is a great time to jump on board with it. Okay, our final segment is, let's look towards next year a little bit. Yeah. So let's talk about. I guess the first thing we'll we'll stay with we'll we'll go back to DC rather. Let's talk about Lazarus Planet. Yeah, this is. Uh, I've read the first part of Lazarus Planet. It's a rain in Lazarus. Hallelujah! It's a yeah. rain in Lazarus. Uh, I don't. I think there's some characters that are not that excited about uh, toxic goo raining on them. But uh, this is will be kind of our first, I think, big event right. of the new year, uh, where. It promises it's going to introduce new characters. We know that uh, characters are going to get who get hit with the Raz Lazarus rain, which almost reminds me of the Marvel Terrigen Mist. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of a thing that activates some kind of uh, powers in people. Some powers are going to be changed. Uh, I won't say too much because I don't remember how much is already out there after issue the Alpha issue. But uh, based on that first Alpha issue that I read. Uh, I'm very excited about this. Yeah. I mean, no surprise, Batman's on the cover, but you got Monkey Prince in the center there. Yeah, I love the uh, choice of characters. It's it's big to small in the uh, the hierarchy of, of DC characters. Okay, the next thing is a Marvel thing that everybody's been wondering if you've been reading Spider-Man. What did <laughs> Peter do? Yeah, I think... Was Will this, they tell us finally? Was this from Free Comic Book Day? Last year, this year, this year, yeah, it was this year. Um, so, I mean, this really, this was the teaser that was leading up to all of it. Uh, Peter Parker has done something unforgivable. Uh, his relationship with Mary Jane is now over, over, and she's moved on to someone else. Uh, everyone hates him, including Aunt May. Kind of couldn't look at him. It was very weird, and uh, I think we thought we would get answers. Fairly fast, and we did. They, they pulled those answers along to 2023. But we do them. know, I believe it's March, is when they're teasing that, you know, the full story is going to be revealed. Okay, so next up from DC, Action Comics has changed its format to where it is going to be more about the entire Superman family. Yeah. It's not just going to be a Superman-centric story. It's going to be sort of multiple stories going, going forward. So the thing we talk about a lot is... Um, it's no surprise we're not we're not revealing anything to people that uh, Batman outsells Superman and has for quite a while. Um, what do you hope to see out of this new uh, era of Superman that's going to get people on board who maybe have not? I I just think they just need strong writers with the right ideas. You know, yeah. people say, oh, Superman, he's boring or he's too powerful. It's like, no, everyone has good stories if the right writer, if the correct writer is writing them. And they just got to find that right one to plug in. Uh -huh. um, it's like, I think what Mark Wade's doing with World Finest. Yeah. So I, I don't know if they will or they won't, but I, that's always my perspective is you don't have to change things. Yeah. You just have to have. Because we talk about that, you know, how important Superman is, not just to his, you know, the series or DC, but to comics. When Superman is doing well, it's it's a it's kind of a sign of like, you know, that things are lined up correctly. Yeah. Okay. So next up is the dawn of the DC universe. Yeah, this is even the free comic book day cover for this coming May. Yeah. Uh, so this is. The next, um, what did they call these? What New 52 was, what Rebirth was? Yeah, it's just sort of like, a, it's not a universe reboot this time, per se, it's like but an, often it would be a universe reboot. Call it like an initiative or whatever. It's like a new um, uh, motto to go forward yeah. with. 
and it's a flag that it's a starting point. You know, it's yeah. another like, hey, get your friends to see if they like the direction of the universe from this point now. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's smart. I know a lot of people are against total reboots, and I think that's, you know, a fair thing. But I do think you do need to look forward. Um, you know, if you keep looking back and being like referencing things all the time, it starts to feel a little bit. You know, why have a universe if it doesn't have its own sort of tale? And yeah. all tales have to have an end, and all tales need to yeah. have a, be- a, a new beginning at some point. Yeah, so we know this is going to start, uh, it says it, uh, over 20 new titles coming out of this. Green Lantern's going to be getting a title again. Uh, that's where the new Superman books are going to, you know, start doing their own thing. We've got a Shazam book by Mark Wade and Dan Mora from your World's Finest team. But there's a lot coming up, and we know very little about this. But something, I think the next one is something we know even less yeah, about. Yeah, I was going to ask you about this next one. The Summer of Symbiote. So I saw, you know, Andy puts the screen together. <laughs> I saw this, and I was like, actually, I don't know if I know much about this yet. I don't think anyone knows anything about this. This is, uh, if you look at the timeline. X on there. Yeah, so this is two events. So we got Summer of Symbiote yeah, and Fall of X, but they come out very close to each other, and so I just combine them on one thing. But they're both summer so, events. So Fall of X, I can, I'm interested in that because you know we've been kind of predicting that for a long time. Yeah, you had Dawn of X, now you have Fall of X. Yeah. Um, but Summer of Symbiotes too. I was going to ask you: Do you have any idea what that may be, given yes. Venom and Carnage and, and all that? Freak like. and all them. They're going to go to the beach. You know, they're oh. going to take a vacation. They're going to hang tent. Summer for symbiotes. Yeah, it's just going to be a good time. So uh, these are so early that like well, there's no covers for them. There's no anything. But you know, summer is about that's you know six months. They've uh, that's about how much they give you with teasing things right um so this is about as far out as we know names for titles and all of that but i'm excited it looks like some big things in major uh arms of the marvel universe the x-men the symbiotes with venom and all of that are going to be hitting some big landmarks and i just feel like a jerk being like i just want to see the x-men just uh, humbled. We'll say humbled. Especially Professor X. I, I, I hope they get to keep Krakoa, though. I mean... Krakoa, be- but like... like Just their own place, where they're respected a little bit. So. Yeah, I like the respect. I don't like the uh, uh, we're better than you attitude. Yeah. Alright, this is the last one, I believe. Yeah, this was uh, an interesting thing that, you know, this definitely isn't an event or anything, but it's a singular title, Hallow's Eve. This is the character that had... Uh, was her first appearance? Was it Dark Web? I, I think so. I think Dark Web yeah. was her first appearance. We now know who she is under the under the suit. I think it's a little recent for me to spoil like who it is, but she is a character that's been around for a long time. But uh, this is also just kind of I like going into the new year with new characters and learning more about them. And Hallow's Eve gets her own miniseries. I wanted to see what her powers are. She does some very weird things in her first appearance where she has masks that she pulls off. And a uh, very interesting kind of uh, goblin-adjacent character. Also, if they announce this now and they plan it for January, February, hopefully we'll have it in time for Halloween. Oh, man. Like, wouldn't that be great? The, the comics have gone the last few years. <laughs> Okay, so that is our show. That's our year-end review wrap-up show. I hope you have enjoyed it. It took us a while to make our choices and put it all together. The stuff we missed, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, You probably have your favorite titles. Let us know what you enjoyed this year and what you're excited for next year. Yep, talk in the comments. That's a great idea. If there's something we missed, mention what you like. Um, We don't want to miss stuff. We want to know what people are we're interested in out there like i said earlier in the year my memory gets hazy and i said did that come out this year or the year before it gets a little iffy all right so we'll be back monday with our normal uh day early review of the comics i'll be releasing next week so until then have a great weekend and happy holiday and merry christmas